Well, this is exciting news. The next generation beast of the Starship family, the V2, has made its official debut at Starbase, poised to revolutionize the aerospace industry in the near future. In addition to this milestone, significant progress is underway on Flight 5 and the construction of the launch tower. Meanwhile, the next launch date for Falcon Heavy is facing delays due to payload issues. With so many important news today, let's dive right in. The arrival of Starship V2 has been eagerly anticipated for some time now. It all began with Elon Musk's tweet last year after Flight 2 where he mentioned four more Starships, the last of V1. Subsequently, V2 was further discussed during the April presentation this year. Amidst these developments, Starship has made significant strides following its first four flights, setting the stage perfectly for the introduction of V2. While attention was focused on preparing for Flight 5 and constructing the new launch tower, SpaceX surprised everyone by unveiling the initial components of V2. On the morning of July 14th, a prototype part emerged from Star Factory, immediately recognizable as the nose cone by its silhouette visible through the factory's glass door. Shortly after, it officially emerged, revealing numerous new features in both design and auxiliary parts, indicating this is indeed a new prototype. Following its unveiling, the nose cone was moved into the high bay. I'm eagerly anticipating the stacking process to commence soon. Musk's announcement a few months ago about six Starship V2 prototypes gives me confidence that production of the first prototype should begin now to meet this target especially since we're already in mid-July. Now let's address the topic that's likely on everyone's mind. How will Starship V2 differ from its predecessor? Musk has commented, this is an important design improvement, indicating that there will be significant changes and advancements in the new iteration. Firstly, a notable change in Starship version 2 involves the heat shield. Unlike its predecessor, where the heat shield was primarily concentrated at the top, the new version will distribute it more extensively on the leeward side. Moreover, there has been an expansion in heat shield coverage beneath the forward flaps, enhancing protection during the rigorous re-entry phase. In addition to these coverage improvements, each heat shield tile appears to have been enhanced. Following Flight 4, SpaceX began using new heat shield tiles with added ablative layers, a technology likely carried over to version 2. Musk mentioned in an interview with Everyday Astronaut a few weeks ago that the heat shield will feature thicker tiles with narrower gaps and improved gap fillers, possibly tightening tolerances for greater reliability. The next significant change is evident in the flap, which garnered much attention following Flight 4. As promised, it has been repositioned closer to the leeward side, departing from the previous 180 degree design for a slightly asymmetrical configuration. This adjustment aims to mitigate direct re-entry effects that led to issues in Flight 4. Moreover, the flap has been elevated higher towards the top, likely enhancing navigation capabilities. In terms of shape, there appear to be further modifications at the edges of the flap. The bottom edge is now more slanted compared to the previous horizontal design, while the top slanted edge has been elongated with the mid edge shortened. Overall, the new design appears more compact and lightweight. However, its performance improvements will need to be verified during actual flight tests. Regarding the flap assembly, the part connecting it to the ship seems to have been reduced in size. This adjustment is expected to lessen direct impacts and enhance overall durability during missions. Those are indeed two significant changes in the new nose cone version compared to its predecessor. Additionally, several other minor upgrades deserve further discussion in upcoming episodes. Besides the nose cone, other components of the new version have also surfaced. On the evening of the 13th, two ring sections, likely test tank segments, were transported into Mega Bay 2. Subsequently, they were assembled and are likely to be welded together soon. Furthermore, glimpses of parts from the payload area have also emerged. Although details from current images are somewhat limited, we anticipate clearer visuals to better analyze the changes in this section. With the emergence of components for the nose cone, payload area, and fuel tank, the stacking process appears to be nearing readiness. Adding to the excitement, it has been confirmed that the first V2 prototype will be designated S33, as evidenced by the symbol seen on the truck transporting the V2's flap. This marks a significant milestone, with 33 poised to usher in a new era for Starship. Musk's assurances 
of increased reliability, enhanced payload capacity, and simplified manufacturing processes further underscore the advancements expected with Starship version 2. Looking ahead, I anticipate the first prototype to be completed by mid-next month, coinciding with the expected completion of the launch tower stack. This convergence of milestones is incredibly meaningful. If you share my enthusiasm, please affirm with a yes in the comment section or share your predictions. Also, don't forget to like the video, share it, and subscribe to our channel for future updates from SpaceX. Just recently, I mentioned the new launch tower, and SpaceX is making significant strides toward its completion target schedule. Following the installation of the first module into the foundation, Module 2 was transported from the Sanchez site to the launch site on the morning of July 12th. As of the time of this update, the crane with its clamping system was already attached to Module 2 poised to be stacked atop Module 1. Additionally, on the morning of the 13th, the final module of the launch tower was also moved to the Sanchez site. With this, the entire tower segment has been fully assembled. SpaceX will now shift focus to the stacking process, aiming to complete the first six segments by July 27th and the remaining three segments by August 15th. At the launch site, alongside the new launch tower developments, progress for Flight 5 is also rapidly advancing. Following the cryogenic test on July 11th, anticipation was high for the static fire test of B-12. Regrettably, as of the latest update, the test had not yet been conducted. However, SpaceX unexpectedly performed another test around noon on the 12th. During this test, venting effects were observed on the prototype to manage pressure reduction. Notably, this test also marked the reintroduction of the spin prime test for Super Heavy, a step previously omitted due to continuous upgrades. SpaceX's decision to conduct this test again underscores their commitment to ensuring every system operates flawlessly. This preparation is crucial as B-12 is slated to return to Starbase and land with the Megazilla arm on its next flight. However, we are still eagerly anticipating the static fire test. SpaceX has a comprehensive testing schedule planned from 6am to 6pm on the 15th, 16th, and the 17th. Given the preparations seen at Starbase, such as methane tank trucks arriving at the launch site and scaffolding being removed from OLM, it seems likely that there will be no further delays this time. Time is of the essence, because following this test, B-12 is expected to return to the build site for hot staging, then back to the launch pad for a wet dress rehearsal with S-30. There's just over half a month left for these preparations, so brace yourself for the next impressive test of Super Heavy B-12. Shifting focus from Starship's developments, let's turn to an update on the payload issue affecting the upcoming Falcon Heavy flight. Following the Goes u mission, anticipation is high for the next missions of this rocket, beginning with the Europa Clipper mission. Scheduled for launch this October atop a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, the Europa Clipper spacecraft will embark on a $5 billion mission to explore Europa, an ice-covered ocean moon of Jupiter, to assess its potential to support life as we know it. However, the launch date for the Europa Clipper mission is currently uncertain due to issues NASA is facing with its spacecraft. According to a test report in May, the mission team discovered that components similar to the transistors on Europa Clipper were failing at lower radiation doses than anticipated. Given that Jupiter's magnetic field is 20,000 times stronger than Earth's, these vulnerable transistors may not withstand the intense radiation environment around Jupiter and its moon, Europa, potentially leading to mission failures. NASA is actively working to identify and address these issues with the Europa Clipper spacecraft. Preliminary analysis is slated for completion by the end of July. Despite these challenges, NASA remains optimistic about maintaining the launch schedule for October. It's crucial to monitor developments to see if Falcon Heavy can proceed with its next launch as planned. This is particularly significant because Falcon Heavy is also scheduled to undertake another pivotal mission, launching the Viper Lunar Lander. Hopefully, resolutions will be swift, allowing Falcon Heavy to continue its important role in advancing space exploration. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.